Will you be okay if your son or daughter marries a virtual human? If he's okay, I'm okay. AI is at least seven x more powerful than what Metaverse was at its peak last year. Chota Neera. So why did he is ready for experiment? Chota Neera, just become. You can. You. You. Yeah, that's his plan to make. You can. Everyone a Chota Neera ji. Ajay is looking at the cookies. The cookies will get into his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's possible, okay? Humanity, stress, yeah, everyone thinks like that after a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling you old. Okay. He's going to go out to everybody. No, he, he's <laughs> alive. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of the Pocket Aces Power Hour. I'm Aditi Shrivastav and we're running this roundtable series to get into the business of content. Today's topic is hot and new. it's something that everyone is talking about but at the same time very few people are actually running with it um it's something that is going to move forward very quickly and everyone needs to get on the bandwagon personally for us contech content plus tech is very very exciting both from um uh, the pov of content creation itself but also from the pov of what we can offer to various partners we work with like brands and other platforms um uh, my guests today are two pioneers in the content and tech ecosystem here is ajay mehta he is the chief content officer at mindshare he has the years and trust of some of the biggest brands in the country such as disney hotstar star sports hul upstocks etc he's been at the helm of some very very exciting campaigns and award winning campaigns welcome ajay thank you um here is neera druparel i would say he has recently shot to stardom especially he's all over my instagram and linkedin feeds he is the head of emerging tech at wpp and the head of mobile and emerging tech at groupm and he is doing a really pioneering job of educating all of us on what is this new frontier of technology in content welcome neera thank you so much aditi Okay, I want you guys now to tell me a little bit about what you actually do behind these fancy titles. <laughs> what do you do? So, <coughs> nothing. Yeah. We just nothing. chill. We just enjoy <laughs> life. I've spent about twenty years in in almost twenty years in WPP. I've done about eleven years in Ogilvy and about uh, eight and a half nine years now at Mindshare. So I started my career in advertising. In two thousand fifteen, uh, I got an opportunity to move. to this side of the business which is media <clears throat> and at that time i think and you would agree that branded content seemed to be the buzzword yes. uh, you know uh, at that time and uh, even i thought that maybe maybe it's a good time to shift from the traditional sort of advertising to this to the side of the business and uh, many people actually you know raised eyebrows saying that why media you're doing pretty well in advertising and stuff and we were doing i mean even now i think uh, that side of the business still you know flourishing but uh, back then i think uh, the move was uh, was a little edgy for me a uh, little risky for me at that time but i still took it and i think it's paid off uh, really well we've done some fantastic work with some of the brands that you mentioned and uh, of course neeraj has been partner in crime in a lot of stuff that we've done and yeah we are here together to actually make some sense out of it we awesome. actually go a long way so when i was leading uh, i've been doing innovations from day one so what really excited me in this space is to do the new like spotting trends and shaping them and that's what i've been doing for almost like a decade now but when i came across ajay which when i was leading innovations at mindshare that's when i realized that something which is super critical to delivering a campaign is to blend the power of creativity content with technology and that's when it's going to resonate with consumers and it's going to create that ultimate wow with consumers out there so yeah he thinks and i execute and now both of us have started thinking <laughs> on similar lines and that's allowing us to create some global headlines for our company not just mindshare but i would say across wpp we've been doing some fabulous work so define contact to a layman i won't say to yeah. a fifth grader because i think they're smarter than us in this yes right? you should phrase that as contact marketing yeah because contact is just a term that we we derive keeping content and tech together yeah I think the while content marketing is a larger umbrella that we operate yeah. I think tech is playing a larger role which is why today in these days you can't ignore tech anymore true therefore content marketing is something that we believe 
is at least the near future and and hopefully it stays for longer so i think at okay. least a, at least a decade back when um, i ventured into this profession of innovation i still remember and ajay would uh, can I agree to this is i used to wait for 3 hours for a 10 minute presentation yeah. when i used to lead mobile marketing the cmo used to say okay this guy has come all enthusiastic full decked up with so many slides give him 10 minutes and that too they used to walk off saying that okay we are getting late i mean my juniors will just handle your innovations out there and from there now we are talking about cmos coming up to us and saying that we need a a tech focused uh, immersion in terms yeah. of what's going on right and like ajay mentioned about uh, cricket in the old days and how cricket is transforming we guys were just chatting up and discussing that in old days the cricket fan meet used to happen where someone from bihar used to call and say ki agar sir virat ne aisa khela hota na to uh, india match jeet jati right that's right. the kind of conversation which you have used to happen now in the 5g era when the speeds go a notch ahead we are creating experiences where fans and their meta humans are popping next to top celebrities and exchanging conversations having some level of gamification out there mm. so all what i believe is uh, i started my career with campaigns like lace khao uh, world cup jao which was more sms driven you know buy the pack enter the yes. code and then if you win you get to go to you know cricket stadiums and watch that match and today you see millions of people wearing the geo dive which is a 12 dollar vr device they could actually place their phones and see that content in an immersive way mm. and and look at 5g era which is ahead of us mm. there's a tech which is going to hit us called hyper reality mm. so you can go stand next to virat and watch the match right now you place the headgear and you are able to watch the match in 360 immersion but with hyper reality you can go sit next to the players and then watch how the match looks like right so it's all evolving and with yeah. the notch speeds which 5g is going to bring in so i keep saying 5g is not about just watching videos that's a, something we've been doing in the 4G era for the longest time now with 5G the speeds will go up and the content marketing per se will transform hmm. and that's where we need more content and creative thinking to come into play to so add to that i think what we also trying to do is uh, i mean you know he's built a experience center within WPP and i think yeah. our job as you know as as agencies today is that we need to educate people out there so we get exposed to all of this because we have the wherewithal time set up his team you know so we get quicker exposure to what is in fact earlier it was only group m today it's the entire wpp yeah. right so so we know that this culture needs to be seeped into our system into our people into our thinking you know but a lot of it is to do with educating clients exactly even partners for that matter you know so because if if they are not on the same page with us like he said that 10 years back 10 minutes presentation okay great you're doing some uh, mobile innovations Like you know something on the side that yeah. Yeah. yeah but today it's integral i mean okay. some of the best campaigns done recently on some of the big brands you know uh, are on the back of technology you yeah. know so uh, and that's what people are taking notice globally so i think there's a shift in the way we're approaching content and like i said earlier i, I don't think in ignore neeraj or a technology yeah. i mean that's where it is in in today's times okay let us just list down the various types of technology that is relevant for content marketing today and just describe it in one one line so once we go deep dive into it everybody knows what we're talking about yeah theek yeah. hai voice ai that's super big i keep saying voice ai is a 1 billion story in india anyone who has mobile can be reached out to voice ai using fancy content and conversations can be driven out there the next one is generative ai which is pretty much like i said the top trending topic this year at least 7x more powerful than what metaverse was at its yes. peak last year and there's tons of work which is happening in the space of generative ai whether it's text voice or video and the third one is this entire space of extended reality mm. which we would break into three topics which is augmented reality virtual reality and mixed reality augmented reality in mm. india is pretty much firing up in all three formats or all three categories as we call it so whether it's in app ar whether it's social ar or whether it's web ar so when i say social ar everyone knows all of us must have tried on platforms like snap insta meta like you filter, go there like yeah. filters filter. you're playing Basic around filter. on the social ar space which is the super scalable ar variants which are available the platforms are going more sharper by the day because they are sitting on the native app so you can do mesmerizing work through the banner ecosystem and ensure reach and then uh, you see the tons of work which are happening in the space of web ar where platforms like niantic or horizons are playing a role the pokemon go company yeah. niantic acquired a platform mm-hmm. called ethwall mm-hmm. ethwall allows you to do mesmerizing stuff for example if i pick up my phone and scan this table right now mm-hmm. it can just get invoked or some characters can come in i can click a picture i can transport mm-hmm. a person to some other place like what we did for kisan together on unilever so again this is basic hygiene web ar stuff mm. or when you say in app ar you would see 
platforms like Flipkart where you launch it and then you can place the ACs and refrigerator in real life spaces. Ikea. There goes IKEA, so many, right? So super apps are getting supercharged through AR and they are enabling commerce in a big way because now you can see how the AC looks in your room yeah. and then you will go ahead and transact quickly, right? So all three categories, it's firing up in a big way. What we are prepping as a company on AR is the next level of AR experience which is going to get driven with low latency. Mm. When speeds with consumers go up, yeah. 110 million people today in India have upgraded to 5G. Hmm. So 10 Mbps would become 200 Mbps and hmm. what can you do? Hmm. And that's where I showcase that with a simple QR code scan. Imagine, name a celebrity like Live Boy and Ajay Devgan for example, right? Name, uh, so Kajol. Soap or Kajol, right? You scan it and Ajay Devgan pops in there and talks about health and hygiene, hand washing and stuff like that. And you can pretty much place him anywhere. And here's a video of what I created at one of the tech events this year, which is about using holograms to perfection, which requires a unique technology called Wallcap, mm. which is what we are building as WPP and Hogarth for the entire market of mm. APAC. We'll hub it very soon. You will get to see more holographic renders getting triggered through augmented reality experiences. Okay. Let me just give you a classic example. Two and a half years back, I decided to create my own clone, my own avatar, right? Yeah. Which is what is so common now. And in those days, we used to read a script worth almost like 10 hours with a white screen. Yeah. I used to keep reading script for 10 hours and that helps me create my clone. I can do that for five minutes to now. To train the clone. Yeah. To train the clone. Now, you now, speak. Exactly. So now I used to go to top celebs in India. I used to play that as a first slide and I used to tell them, dude, this is not me. This is my clone who's talking to you. And then I uh, loaded up my clones even in top conferences. Mm -hmm. So when the, earlier this year, when we were releasing our report with Amazon and MMA, mm -hmm. I got my clone to do the unveiling of the report. Nice. And then I showed my language models. So suddenly my clone started talking Malayalam, Kannada, Bengali and a bunch of other languages which I cannot speak. Uh, like he said, like there, there is a record number of immersive sessions which we are running for our clients to upskill them of certain areas of work. Now yeah. AI is top priority. AI is at least 7x more powerful than what Metaverse was at its peak last year. Yeah. Right. So everyone wants to know what all can you do with AI, mm. whether it's uh, ideation, optimization, prediction models and tons of work which is possible in this space of creative AI, right? And me and Ajay, we were having a conversation and I used to keep coming back uh, to him saying that let's use chat GPT to render a content, let's yeah. create some purity checks, let's do this for the brand, that for the brand. And then we were discussing that this is something consumer already has access to. Yeah. Consumer can go on a chat GPT, pay $10, also get access to the best of the platforms or go free. Yeah. 3.5, everyone's using it. Correct. So consumer's IQ is elevated already. Yeah. Their emails have become sci-fi. Even your uh, uh, search, also has become AI search has become AI driven. Every, everything is up there. So what do we do then? To create mind-blowing experience for consumers which they cannot. Hmm. So then we decided why don't we mash a couple of platforms, get a couple of platforms to talk to each other. Hmm and create an experience which consumer cannot go out there in open source and render it. Okay. That's where the classic case of uh, Britannia came in, the work which we did for yeah. Mindshare in this cricketing season. Yeah. We got consumers on their most favorite and stickier platform which is WhatsApp. It's at 580 million, it's equal Definitely. into smartphone in India. Yes. And we asked uh, people that you can come in, it's a cricketing season, you can ask India's ex-coach Ravi Shastri anything, he's going to respond back at you. But mm. behind the scenes, we had so many platforms cross-matched and talking to each other to give that experience to the consumer. Mm. So you go there, ask Ravi Shastri any question about cricket, the question goes to chat GPT. Yeah. And mind you, when the question goes in, it crosses a profanity layer. So if there are some negative keywords, you filter them out and then sure. the question goes to chat GPT, the response which gets rendered again goes through a profanity layer. Mm. So the output is also under check. Mm. Then that content goes to an AI powered avatar which we created of Ravi Shastri. Yeah. Then we render text to video. So for a consumer on a WhatsApp, he asked a question and he's getting a dynamic response yeah. from India's cricket coach and that too on a cricketing season. So that when, makes we, were, it super when we were testing this, huh. when we were testing this piece, we also realized that, like he said, the profanity layer and the guardrails, there were responses we were getting during testing. Yes. That, <laughs> suppose you asked Ravi that, uh, how will, will India win the World Cup, yeah. you know? And then of course the, the response comes in about 15 minutes, 10, yeah. 15 minutes and says video, he's speaking to you straight into the at you, you know, and he's like, uh, and he speaks and he says that of course they'll win the World Cup, but the only way they'll win it is they pay, if they pay their way through. So I'm saying that, you know, you can't re rely on the open source right. so openly and then expect the, I mean, the response was because the brand was 50-50, uh, right? We, are, we, had to, we had to engineer the AI with some rock solid prompt engineering to give us a 
reverse perspective, like a gold mal perspective, yeah. which goes with the ethos of the brand. Of 50, so you 50, are asking 50, yeah, AI yeah. to give you a reverse perspective. So Ravi Shastri will start with a disclaimer, saying that this is for fun. And all that was under check. So he hmm. can give some wacky advice. It's Haan. coming in from system generated content. Got it. it can go haywire as well. But you're calling it out. Taking this into different touch points, whether it's retail, he spoke about, you know, IKEA. I mean, imagine hmm. we designing your entire yeah. room on a phone or a pad, literally, yeah. you know, iPad. Or even if for that matter, when you have to experience like classic, absolute and the, the bottle that you've seen for so many years. Yeah. You scan the bottle. I think even uh, uh, I think even the gin brand Bombay Sapphire did it. Yeah. You scan the bottle and the whole world pops up. Like Coke also does it. You know, those experiences that these guys are seeking, the youth is seeking. This is what so, Ajay is saying. You scan so this, and this cookies you know? will come out. Yeah, they're so used to it. You know, they're so used to gamification of things around them. Mm -hmm. Even in real time when they're playing games. Or this when is what the experience Ajay is. Ajay is looking at the cookies. The cookies will get into his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's possible. Okay. Yeah, I'm hungry now. Okay. <laughs> All right, so so the focus is on the next level of augmented reality experience, whether it's Understood. getting triggered through holograms or there's a tech which is coming up, which is blow our mind called VPS, Virtual Positioning System, which can create like real life experiences. For example, if I render a wall here hmm. and then scan it through a QR code using VPS, then the entire impact which you will see, which will be more lifelike. Yeah. Currently, you see AR and you feel this is so gimmicky. Hmm. With VPS, it's going to become more lifelike. Imagine. Hmm any brand, like any Mindshare, uh, say Unilever brand, and if you want to turn the Taj Mahal chocolatey on Valentine's Day, mm. you can do that through VPS. And it's going to be exactly like actual Taj Mahal turning chocolatey and not animated Taj Mahal. That's VPS for you. Okay. And, and then comes your power of generative AI yeah. and augmented reality, where I give the power to the consumer mm. to go in there. For, for example, there are cookies here. And I want to just go in there and the consumer has the power now to punch in a text and say, hmm. I want to change this color to blue. Hmm. The color changes to blue. Hmm. And then I want to pose with it. So generative AI is giving the power to the consumer to render AR in runtime, which was never ever possible. Okay. So there's so much on generative AI which can play a role there. So now on extended reality, we spoke about AR and the next level of AR. Yeah. Then comes VR. The bigger challenge with virtual reality was the price point Hardware. of Quest. Yeah. The hardware, the input device, which was 54,000, yeah. which is the price point now, 54 or 45, I'm not sure. But that particular price point is brought down to $12 now with the geo dive device, right? Yeah, so that's the one we you, about. you can place your phone and you can go there, and that's how millions of people they watch cricket match. Yeah. Right? So that's a classic use case of an input hardware along with 5G and some mind blowing content. So Geo as a marketer, you are going to think of the fact that how are you going to delight the consumer So one is obviously Geo is going to create content for the device. Yes. Which they Achha, are going to specifically do. For we the have device. opportunity to get brands in and create some stuff. So like I said, gamification. If hmm. I want to create Kitano ke saath, hmm. germs ke saath, if I have to create for a brand. Hmm. Yeah. Wearing the device, it's a normal game, right? You're just wearing it and you're trying to kill or burst. Right. There's you know, a game called Synth Rider, yeah. which work, works yeah, on, on head gesture. gesture. So you put that on. And then you can move the head to kill stuff. That's the next level of, mm. you know, sort of gamification with brands, with technology. Yeah. And that, that's what makes experience far more richer, you yeah, know. Absolutely. Also, I think if you look in classic advertising, marketing mm. terms, you say brand recall and we, you know, check for all these, you said KPIs and parameters. These are things that help you actually associate stronger with a brand. Yeah. You're making the brand far more relevant to your consumer because they're delivering such experiences to them, which have never right. been seen or done by them. Yeah. So when you walk into a mall and you see a booth kept over there and there's some experience happening, that's going to stay with you. Yeah. Right? I mean, someone in the team just told us the same, this geo dive that he showed me, a brilliant idea. I mean, it's an idea for any brand to take. Any airline who, who can actually introduce this yeah. in a business class yeah. for the consumers, of course, it's an expensive proposition for the, for the, for the unit, but Makes at least for the business class where you're paying three lakhs and five lakhs, per ticket these days, hmm. why can't you give that experience to people hmm. selling over there? Which sets of consumers are you targeting first, right? Or should a brand target first? Is there a lower hanging fruit in younger consumers? Or, I mean, I'm really amazed to hear that like rural consumers could be like a lower hanging fruit as well, whether it's with voice AI or, or other things. So are you thinking about which consumers are you targeting first or which so I, brand and I hence which brands you are going to and see, suggesting this first. Today mobile is with me. Hmm. My domestic health, health has a mobile. Yeah. She's also using, she's got more followers than me honestly on Instagram. 
Is it? My dad. Yeah, all, yeah. My, all my she, girls she's, are on Snapchat. She's making content on the fly. She takes yeah. my dog for a walk. She's shooting videos. Yeah. This morning I asked her, I said, were you shooting videos in the morning? She's saying, yeah. My dad is using a mobile. He's on Instagram. He's on uh, WhatsApp. Everyone is on social. True. Yeah? yeah. Of course, there is a bunch who, who would say that, you know, there's a certain limit to be exposed to, uh, yes. to the, to the uh, you know, device and social. But I don't see it that way. I think the examples that we spoke about, whether it's to do with youth. Of course, youth is living this, right? Mm. I mean, the fear that we have, I have a 12 year old, he has a seven, eight, seven eight year old. We obviously feel that they are too much into it. Yeah. Like at times I see him on three devices. Mm. He's playing the game. He's talking on WhatsApp in a group with them. Yeah. They're trying to figure out a video, of seeing the review of what he's talking to them. It's too much happening. There's so mm. much exposure. So you're a little worried, but I think youth is, if you're asking me lowest hanging fruit, Maybe youth is because they are the ones who are more into it. Mm. Their language, their slang, the way they talk is all this, right? I mean, I'm the vibe and let's be the vibe. Stuff like that is all built on social. Yeah. But if you look at, like he said, the rural program, uh, wherever there's a device in the hands of a consumer, we have an opportunity, yeah. right? So even if it means that going deep down and, and the way you do it with them, it also matters that if you're talking to a rural audience, you'll talk in a certain manner to them. Mm. You'll make it simpler for them. Mm. If you tell them, scan this, do this, they may struggle over that. Yeah. Because literacy or whatever the issues are, you know, using tech or being challenged in some form. Mm. And that's not the problem with youth. But I think if the brand's objective is clear, we can devise a strategy or an idea that fits the bill and it's, it's meant for a certain audience. I don't mm. think there's an issue over there. And like he said that, WhatsApp is universal. Mm. It's just about clicking a link and everything opens up over there. Correct. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a platform where you can do a host of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I think the simpler you keep it, yeah. uh, the easier you make it for them. I think it's, it's easier to land it with, with yeah. consumers. Yes. The fact that brands can do all of this stuff is definitely cool, right? Coming back to what more is the audience getting out of it, is there a risk of looking gimmicky to the audience? Yeah. I mean, see, at some level, you raised a point in the earlier discussion about metaverse and NFTs. Yeah. And you also question, are these fads? Yes. The way technology is evolving, we don't know what's going to stick for long. Hmm. All we know is that, like he's saying, the base of this, which is 5G, and the kind of bandwidth we have to play with, which is where today everything is 3D. Yeah. Right? It's immersive. If you look at, they've launched GTA again, the Grand Theft Auto, yes. the new game, which is going to yeah. hit us in 25, I think. You see the, the, the trailer, the promo, it's unbelievable, mm. right? And th those kind of uh, visual effects and 3D rendering will not sustain on a normal low bandwidth connection. So mm. you need 5G to raise it. Mm. And we're already there, mm. right? But there will be technology that's coming. So Metaverse came, we tested, we did some really cool stuff. Mm. I think over there also what we realize is that while we create Metaverse, and Metaverse, is, any game is a Metaverse, right? right? Technically, when you go into Roblox or any of the other games, you're playing in the Metaverse. The problem is the investments that you need to make mm. behind a Metaverse. You can't just have it. Of course, it's gimmicky. You, we've done it for a launch. Mm. Uh, it's worked for the brand. We've got some people in from a trade standpoint. Now, imagine getting people from all India into one location to launch something. Mm. Here, we created a Metaverse. We got them to log in on a, on a particular time and date. They all came in, they unveiled the, 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 the product there. It went off well. So it was a very specific, well-designed, yeah. so Experience. to say, virtual event that yeah. we had done. Did we invest too much money? Not much. Yeah. Did it work for the brand? Yes, at least put the brand from a sustainable standpoint to a tech-led you know, conversation. In that era, in that sphere, it, it worked well for the brand as well. But if you tell me that a brand has to invest in a destination, then they have to heavily invest behind it. Yeah. Why will I go? Because you're, you're Eventually they would. I, I would say that currently everyone was just playing with the novelty value of yeah. the platform, right? Right. And when a platform is trending, every all marketer or all of us, they, we think that how can we go there and play around and leverage the novelty value of that platform. Mm. But when the novelty value perishes, that's when the real value gets yeah. realized. And, Correct. And now with, uh, again, I mean, I keep saying that 5G super highways, you will have to take that experience a notch ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. From the same QR code scan where 10 billion people are now getting activated through UPI, yeah. which is to adjust point to make that consumer experience completely idiot proof. Yeah. Scan and you are there. Scan, my hologram pops. Yeah. Scan and transact, mm -hmm. right? So the same QR code will be the bridge between consumer and the Experience. 5G super destinations, yeah. which are going to be immersive. And these same advertisers who are now writing off 
metaverse or virtual worlds will end up creating a fancy destination out there. Aditi, you've built a destination called Pocket Aces hmm. with so much content. Hmm. You know what goes into actually getting consumer to your platform. Yes. Right? I mean, the, the time, the amount of content pieces, hmm. the investment, sponsorships by brands. Hmm. Then, it, which is why today Pocket Aces is there where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Imagine a brand investing for a destination, any yeah. brand, creating a even a, a fun sort of a you know. There are brands that can actually leverage uh, metaverse in a very beautiful manner. Yeah. But you need to have a strat behind it. Get you it. need to have a longer five-year view, yeah. saying that we'll keep incentivizing them, we'll keep having the fun element in it because. A boring place will never have people coming in. So one of the fun ideas and we had around the whole metaverse thing and based, based on our content was what if we make like a neighborhood where in metaverse where basically all your favorite influencers and like your favorite actors from our universe of filter copy, dice, etc. They have houses. Yeah. And they do different things, yeah. right? They go for a concert, they do, you know, they go out to a restaurant, they go to a pub. Would you buy a house in that neighborhood as a fan, right? Or as a super fan? Um, yeah. And that's something very interesting that we kind of conceptualized and thought of. And, you know, at that time, we were also looking at NFTs. This is all yeah, in yeah. the last couple that's of years, enough, yeah. right? And because we own so much IP. So yeah. what can you do uh, more in that NFT universe? But one thing we realized from an audience perspective was, overall, it was still too early from while we as creators and as brands can do something cool and you know it's a talking point it's an award winning point it's a man vanity metric it's also like a very progressive cool thing to do as a creator right we're yeah. all passionate about what's the next frontier we can push you yeah. know you don't want to do the same thing again and again yeah. but from the audience point like while they can experience are they willing to pay for it i am not sure but yes just to experience it and become closer to you as a brand, closer to you as a creator, etc, etc. That's definitely, I think, something which we will see as the ROI. Aditi, the thing is that, you know, how much time are we spending on the phone? We're yeah. spending enough and more time in the day, right? Yeah. How many options we have to go and see content? I have, for example, yesterday I was traveling, so obviously I have some time to look at my, there's sports on Disney Hotstars, mm. Geo Cinema. <coughs> There's content on Netflix, Pocket Aces, Amazon Prime. Then there's shopping on Flipkart, Amazon.in. There's news that's happening on multiple platforms. There's a stock market blowing up, so you're on money control. Imagine the number of apps you're entering and stepping out Correct. or keeping the windows open because you're looking at it the whole day, yeah. right? Now in that, for a brand to create, see any of these metaverses, etc., are all brand destinations. Yes. If a brand really wants to pick it up and do it like big brands, right? These destinations need heavy amount of investment. Yeah. Strat, like I said earlier, they need to have a consumer who keeps coming back, mm. which is not easy. We create websites for brands or destinations for brands, we struggle. Mm. Five, five years investments in crows, literally, just because we know that we want consumers to come in, we get their data in, how do you retarget them, what kind of content will serve to them, who are the influencers. What you said, if you pick up a small insight saying that in our country, that all of us are fan crazy mm. and you know celeb crazy you'll get the audience coming in but and you're making it accessible to them right yeah. you're giving them the chance to be owning a house if that's the concept next to a celeb's or home or a fraction of a house or getting to see their house i mean imagine you put houses out there and the houses look similar to what their real houses are yeah. i mean there's an experience there's a sort of a, you know there's some sort of a quirk for me to go and Correct. figure out what this world is but the point is, will he come back? Mm. And then if you're putting money year on year and not able to deliver the audience that the brand desires, there's no point. You know, Then I might as well create on a platform where I can just go in and come out and let it be there. And they have their own audience. That makes more sense. So we've learned along the way. You may say it's a gimmick. At some level, it is a gimmick. But if you've done it smartly, it's worked for you in, an, in a mm. tactical and activation manner. You also gave the different angles, right? Yeah. This time on their app, on Geo Cinema, right? So these are experiences, I mean, you'll go and try, you know, and if it clicks, it clicks. I don't want to see, I want to see the boundary line view of yeah. the match. You know, it's like almost saying in You're my head. You're not restricted to your seat. Yeah, I mean, I'm not restricted yeah. to the same view that I've seen for so many donkey years on television. Correct. So again, it, it boils down to the fact that can we deliver newer, more interesting ways and experiences to yeah. the consumer? 
they will buy into it yeah. and they're looking for it you and, know and and look at uh, look at advertisers today they have got a consumer facing website where like i just said they are struggling to get uh, um, uh, what do you call consumers out there but they they have a retailer facing applications mm -hmm. and yeah. using all the tech stack and the fancy content which the tech stack is helping you create we are supercharging those apps yeah. look at shikhar app yeah. we introduced live commerce onto it and we sold inventory worth millions of dollars with Mandira Vedi and Siddharth Kanan. Yeah. Look at how we are adding a layer of generative AI where we are getting Arshad Vashi and five different parameters which are getting in runtime transformed for retailers to create their own ads. So imagine a brand wants to give out a Diwali offer yeah. or a consumer offer or a retail typical offer. You can actually invite or there are brands that engage with trade on a regular basis. Yeah. So a lot of brands spend money in incentivizing trade, taking them for trips, Talking about newer promotions, Diwali promo mein yeh discount milega, yeh product range pe yeh milega. Mm. Now, how is that done? You go into a five-star hotel, you get them in, you speak to them, you get some celebrities, they talk to the entire audience. Some guys get a chance to talk to the celebrity, take pictures, and then they're That's gone. It. And then the presentation is made to say that these are the offers available for this year. Go out there, get your targets, your targets done, our targets done. Mm. Very simple. That's the model for many years. Of course, there are people who have done different stuff as well. Yeah. Here comes a piece which you get introduced to called live commerce. He's got the tech stack, he's got the right partners in place. He brings it to the table. He says, can we do this with our clients? We go to a client and say that this year, for your trade, don't go out and do this. Mm. Don't need to fly them down to all these places. Mm. Let's block a day on a Sunday, one hour. Call those guys on your platform. They already have an existing platform. We'll roll out the offer with through a celebrity, mm -hmm. the same way you would do it in a in a big shabang manner, right? You get the guy shabang in shabang manner, shabang, <laughs> bang bang manner, uh -huh. <laughs> and get get those guys in. And what happens? Suddenly you are sitting on your screen, sitting at your home as a retailer or as a whatever part of trade. They're looking at uh, Mandira Bedi and uh, Siddharth Kanan, who's got a lot of energy in him, yeah. yeah. And she's giving out and he's giving out offers to them and personalizing it. So he's literally talking, people asking questions. He's like, Kishore, you have to order so much. Why are you doing so much? It's special for you. So this is a classic example of how on your existing assets or maybe on your website, wherever you can introduce, you can just integrate a layer of live commerce yeah. where uh, your consumers or your retailers just can click and go live and they get to see celebrities out there mm -hmm. and they can exchange notes with them and they can transact then and there because the platform will be completely commerce enabled so they can just click transact if you go in china they are not just using real celebrities but they also use digital Virtual. ai mascots yeah, yeah. Yeah. who are pretty much live 24 hours 365 they never get tired you log in two o'clock at night you can they will still sell you the product with same energy same passion yeah right so so all that is already happening now there is a layer of xr which is going to get introduced into live commerce again with the 5g era so he gives an example which is now i'm elevating it and giving an example at with xr mm. Aditi walks into a live commerce platform as a as a lead influencer mm. and she can just use her voice command to change. Mm. Now this furniture is available in four colors. Orange, this turns into orange. Oh. And she flips it like that, all the furniture will move around okay. completely in augmented style, right? Okay. And every furniture will have a price tag attached to it. Yeah. You can change the environment. You can I can get you and when you're trying and talking to Gujarati community, say in Gujarat, then your costume changes, mm. your environment changes. You're so, talking to like Karnataka and Kannada audiences, then AI walks in, XR walks in, so much tech stack comes together and consumer feels more like home. And it, right. it really comes really closer when it comes to influencer marketing. Yeah. Right? You can just plug in, give this platform to influencers such that they can go there, there's a trust which is already inbuilt, they can go live and so they can sell products. He can plug it into your platform as well. Yeah. Right? Let's do that yeah. so, right away. Imagine you release a show, hmm. take any of your new shows you release it. Hmm. You do a See. typical way of Promoting it is, you'll promote it online with promos, etc. Yeah. Two weeks promotion, show comes live. You may have a sort of a small get together, premiere type that you would do. Yeah. Now, in all of this, the one key thing you'll always do is meet and greet mm. with the stars. Mm. Mm. All you need to do is get these guys plugged into your platform. They'll speak about the show. You can invite your audience, you have an existing audience. You get more people in. And of course, I'm assuming the faces are pretty famous. Yes. So they'll pull in more crowd. You give your freebies, ask questions, all that can be done. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of cost saving. The idea is not to do cost saving, yeah. but there is cost saving. Efficiencies are built into it. There's one-on-one -on -one interaction happening with these guys. 
and its novelty value as well you know mm -hmm. and i think even celebs today have <laughs> understood the game covid made us understand that exactly. we had no choice but to sit in our bedroom and do all of this mm. so it's easier to do it and technology is only advanced since then mm. you know so we we don't go to like people don't come every day to office and sit there and do it they are working from wherever they want we create and put out about 50 pieces of new content a day and virtual production and all of these kind of technologies even digital avatars of some of the regular faces we use in our content can really lower the cost and help speed up the amount of content we put out yeah. so uh, how i you know is this usable in hygiene content that you're putting out on a daily basis how i think there's a lot of disruption happening in that space hmm. see when it comes to hygiene you know for a fact that brands typically would have a key visual that you will use hmm. across the board right i mean big brands like typically if you see you know emirates when mm. they launch their campaign or any of the big brands uh, there would be a critical visual that you will pick even for your shows yeah you will take that visual and blow it up everywhere and of course you will you have to change sizes and formats depending on the platform you're going to deploy it and uh, what platform with ai are doing or helping given that there are multiple of them and multiple of them have different sort of features and and benefits these guys are trying to create a platform where everything is plugged in right okay. so what happens is that one you have the ability to actually uh, use a visual and you know uh, adapt it to multiple sizes languages so transitions can be done on the fly size adapts can be done uh, headlines can be changed call to action can be as per your platform as per your market as per the offer in different markets uh faces can be changed depending on the celebrity you want to so that the flexibility is that i can put a north indian star versus a south indian star on the fly so mm. the manual intervention mm. that we all have studios and we have people sitting and actually creating stuff is getting fairly automated mm. right i mean uh, of course it's in beta stage we are trying to create some stuff like that but i think the 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 beauty is that the turnaround time and and the and the kind of uh, manual labor and the money you spend typically to get all this done space required studio mm -hmm. put up designer dtp guy yeah. creative supervision qc all that is getting really crunched into one tech stack or a, or a platform which actually gives you gives this to you in a on a click of a button yeah. so we've seen demos it's mind blowing to see because we've been through the journey of spending times right from early you know late 90s to see bromides and positives being created for print ads yeah. you know digital gifs etc etc but this is creating formats adaptations on the fly mm. that's one part yeah. the other part is where gen ai comes in mm. right can i use prompts to actually create uh creatives for myself mm. like i said i want to put a car on a mountain beautiful uh, you know uh, sun beaming on the car uh, a model young guy standing next to the car all that is created on its own mm. now that's pulling in yeah you know content or whatever image images or you know sourcing it from different sort of uh, sources of course that has to be again monitored at the back over mm. because you can't just pull images and have mm. tomorrow you may pull salman khan and put him his picture over there yeah. so one is the adaptation world one is the uh, the newer creation and original content being created yeah. and i think all of this is just helping and enabling the process to be slightly more faster Correct. planet of 8.8 billion people right and if the brand needs to go the personalized way yeah. it's it's manually impossible to create those yeah. renditions so that's where gen ai will play a role it's just 100%. that somebody needs to own up that ecosystem and create an environment for all the examples which ajay gave in terms of rendering those content in run time in the best possible way meeting the brand guidelines yeah. and dealing with stock and rights cleared content yeah that's yeah. super critical and that's what the platform which we are working towards the wpp and nvidia partnership which is being there in our industry everyone's talking about it that's exactly going to do that and we've been already testing out of prototypes mm. like you said so so that's one area where you will see tons and tons of brand experimentation which will peak in mm. where it can be maybe it can be brands are owning certain moments mm. like mondelez yeah. is owning up the birthday moment yeah. which is like on the one of the audio use cases but there are so many use cases which are coming up where they are owning up various moments and they are creating renditions on the fly so i think we'll wrap this up with a slightly different put away your professional hats and your you know group m wpp hats so just on a personal level right not talking about any of the campaigns and stuff 
how is it going to change the way we live our lives? Okay, I'll give an example in my, huh? the way I look at it. I mean, I can see it at home, right? My, my dad, me and my son, right? Dad is watching with the remote, kal still watching, kal. still watching news channels, still watching what's happening yeah. around elections. Mm. He's still watching his television, mm. right? And I'm not saying that TV is not being watched by everyone else. Mm. I am on the other hand jumping between Netflix, Amazon Prime, a stock market app, uh, sometimes gaming, mm. music, etc. Mm. And my kid is sitting and playing with Alexa, mm. telling Alexa. So classic behavior difference. Mm. I don't go and give a voice command when I'm searching. I'm still searching on Correct. Google and other mm. things. He's searching on voice. Mm. He's searching on voice even with a Netflix or Amazon remote. I mean, that's the exposure they have. Mm. If you ask me, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, I don't know where we're going to be. I don't know whether people will have the kind of jobs today we have. Of course, we need to evolve like we spoke about earlier as well. My only fear, and sometimes I disagree with, uh, while we agree most of the time, I also disagree with him saying that, you know, COVID also made us believe that we want to go out, right? Kids are not stepping out and going out to parks, playing cricket in gullies that we used to do. We were half the time in, in our summer vacation and winter, playing cricket until the time my parents were yelling and saying come for dinner or lunch we never left the field and went up today they don't step out so I was reading somewhere saying that I think 2030 or 2032 around that time mm. is the year when it will be about singularity mm. which is my fear man which machine you're, coexisting you're so much into that uh, device and so much into an unreal setup like we know what social does to people and there's a huge call out on men mental health and issues and it's true right it, it sometimes it screws your brain because you're seeing so much of other people like look at Ori yeah what a life he has he's I, a liver I'm a liver <laughs> like dude come on like amazing yeah he's come out of nowhere yeah. so I don't know whether how technology is going to really create I mean it's already disrupting whether you say, speak about jobs whether you speak about how we consume content how our relationships are built uh, and which is why the singularity, uh, you know, comment. I think it's gonna it's gonna impact us both in a positive way, but I'm sure there's gonna be a negative impact in the way things will pan out. So the more we say unreal, when people when he spoke about metaverse, I wasn't excited. We've done work for brands, but I feel when you've come out from a two year sitting in your small home, mm. Bombay. Of course, you guys may have bigger homes in a 3 BHK, 2 BHK homes. You want to be out there, right? You don't want to go back in a metaverse and, and meet digital avatar of XYZ and say, do what's up. You want to meet and socialize. You want to meet people. I think that's the difference in this world with social and the advent of tech. So, which maybe people don't talk about so much. People don't, of course, it's written about in some form or the other. But <coughs> using technology, using the social platforms uh, to garner certain messages in some form in a negative way, I think that's the fear I have keeping the younger generation in mind. Yeah. Anyways, they're off. I mean, to get attention of my little one is like, well, I have to go and tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, I'm here. You know, sit. Leave, leave alone my wife saying you don't have time from work. But that world is so yeah. immersed in this device. It's, for me, it's a little... You've got to get into that world. I yeah. love it. I feel like we really like, just like inside as if he No, no, it's very out. concerning. I, it, I, I think it. we, and as... As marketeers, as agency folk, we are responsible for it. Yeah. You know, we can't be putting stuff out there that will have a negative impact on someone. Yeah? There, and there are a lot of cases you see in here of so many of these creators globally, even in India. You know, it, it yeah. just gets to their mind and... I mean, it's a classic, right? I've, I've seen kids uh, during COVID at some friend's place where they are trying to swipe the television. Boss. Yeah, the other day I was uh, trying to zoom Everything in the Everything is not smart, newspaper. right? Yeah. I was trying to zoom in the newspaper. Like as a reflex action almost. <laughs> yeah, like times when I read the news That's to me. But my, my, my thought is... Uh, they should be doing that actually already. Yeah. It's so simple. Maybe I've got different uh, no, you have brain other... cells and my, I think differently. So no, but sure, that's sure. the beauty of it, right? Yeah. You work together but personal views are different, yeah, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. Huh. So, I, I mean, I mean, some of it I'll, I'll agree, but most of uh, it I might not agree. But the way, way my, my mind thinks is I have surrounded myself with a lot of gadgets, a lot of technology, which drives me, right? Including uh, if you guys might be going to sleep with uh, putting your phone on charge, I put some seven things on charge and I go to sleep. <laughs> it's my eyewear, my smartwatch, so much my stuff. My husband you know? is like this. 
and and so I surround myself with a lot of it, and I love all these uh, uh, softwares or softwares which are around me, and that uh, that allows me to be more productive and more impactful in whatever I do. So whether it's my immersive studio, I, I'm maybe the first one to kind of put my money and create an experience like that. In your Be home? In my home. You'll see a lot of experimentation, maybe half of the money I earn, I put into all the experimentation, headgears, I, I buy all of that and my son is pretty much like that. So if we are spending time, I would say quality time would be getting into PS5 and playing that FIFA game where Ronaldo is playing against Messi, he's Messi, I'm Ronaldo, we are playing, mm -hmm. we're chilling out there. And then uh, it gives me a perspective that if I were to create brand storytelling on uh, virtual worlds for the Zen Alpha audience who are going to be the future 30 yes. years down the line They're going to be living the, in these worlds, right? So that's where you will see more brands creating their AI mascots like what Wendy's did Where Wendy's as a character came and she was playing with a avid boost, VR gamers boost, like us boost and, and then she was beating us at that and she was leaving a message mm. a brand message out there So it'll be more storytelling on these immersive Come back to worlds. personal Right and and again so again that that was one example of how mm. marketing will pan out 30 years down the line maybe it'll be more sharper mm. but yeah uh, personally I'm always surrounded by uh, technology and uh, uh, the personal goal is to do something for the planet and also for the mankind yeah. there's so much good work you can do using the power of technology yeah. right if there is web there is dark web so yeah. there'll be dark side of any technology which kicks in but AI is such a big problem solver for yeah. mankind and you can do you, and like uh, one of our senior leaders, our chief AI officer was in India and uh, I was taking him around and he was asking me so many questions and every time I was giving him a perspective about India and the problems we have, he was making a note. So I asked him like, what is this all about? He's like, I want to just go back to the drawing board and, and try and see how technology can solve for this, mm, yeah. right? Mm. Which is so amazing. So there are so many leaders I get to learn from, whether they are friends. I surround myself with people who are either creative or who are like real fanatics when it comes to technology, yeah. right? So you learn and, and look, everything, everything about me, I personally feel it should be progressive and positive. Mm -hmm. I don't even think negative in any way because yeah. as a lead of creative technology or someone leading innovations and if I'm meeting the top CMOs in the country or if I'm hosting them, I constantly stay positive in my yeah. approach. Doesn't mean that I don't warn them about what are the negative sides. I yeah. do it in my own way. But the communication remains positive, right? Like, look at my shoes. I've got an NFC chip here. Mm. People ask me, like, what's the need of doing all this? I said, no, I love it. Like, there's so much technology which walks with me, yeah. which creates a perception about a leader who wants to change something. Yeah. Like, some, a change agent who wants to walk into the room and drive change. Yeah. And that's only possible when you live it. Correct. So, so all that, I mean, and so we were discussing in... hiring. We were discussing yeah. hiring. Mm. And I was telling him, don't hire anyone who is not living Web3. Yeah. Oh, kya change laega, you know? Correct. Wo, like no, the I way he agree. thinks is brilliant, yeah. right? Huh. Humanity, stress, yeah, everyone thinks like that after a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling you old. Okay. So he's going to go out to everyone. No, he, he's arrived. <laughs> he's arrived in life. So everyone thinks like that in a certain way. A lot of our clients exactly think like that. A lot of our clients, they want to experiment with a lot of stuff. But then question is 30 years down the line. Yeah, yeah. 30 years down the so line, things I'm, will change. I'm not talking about hiring, I'm not talking about clients, I'm not What's talking about... It's Virtual marriage, marriage with digital humans, <laughs> Haan, living correct. with her, that is the not having a the, wife. That is a funny point, not even scary so this is what <laughs> I was discussing with my wife yesterday. Haan. I said, the way it's going, I think, forget dating online, it's going to be marriages online, literally. So will you be okay we'll be if your son now? or daughter marriages? See, my ma son, my son goes on his virtual. first date, it's not going to be surprising if a robo comes and takes the order. Uh, that, is, that is already happening. And that too, the robot is have a question. Off. Yes or no question? Yeah. Just yes or no. Will you be okay if your son or daughter marries a virtual human? Perfectly. If he's okay, I'm okay. My personal view on this is, right, that I think uh, it tech will be all pervasive, right? And you can't only stick to, oh, we'll play a game or interact with a human in a specific way. Right. It's wearables have already started a very, very long time so ago. So you think and Elon Musk and Ronaldo have got so many kids to take away their stem cells and live younger? No, I'm not talking <laughs> yeah, about anyone young, specific, dude. but people are doing it. And yeah. I do feel that in our lifetime, we'll be able to go and, you know, visit Mars. Right and you know if you have the money, uh, I, you you can pocket aces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, the point is that you know all of this thinking will, will go only hand in hand. The map for us. Like if <laughs> like if you are saying that so much population is destroying our planet and there's pollution and there's 
that view will also lead you to check out whether another planet is viable for living. That's already happening. Exactly. Yeah. So what I'm saying is all of this stuff will go hand in hand and will really change the way we live. I mean, Jetsons had predicted this, what, 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff is playing out. So my whole point is that like, we can think about this as campaigns and as marketeers, but at the end of the day, we are in a position to actually really advance how regular people think about yeah. it. And actually with all your guys' campaigns, that's what you are doing and yeah. then they will want it in their daily lives more and more. Like his beta so, human avatar is scary, if you ask me. Like I was giving him a scare, <laughs> I was giving him a super suggestion that look at this uh, uh, the program which Elon Musk is running right now. What is that? Neuralink. Yeah. So if I were to place a Neuralink gear on his head, and put all the emerging tech content back onto his head. I can. So tomorrow he will start talking content, which he's a king at, yeah. and technology as well. Chota so you he can is ready your for same Chota Neeraj will become. You can, you, you yeah, can. That's his plan to make you can. everyone a Chota Neeraj. There's a lot of debate that happens, and I, I think the bigger the creative guys you speak to, yeah. this whole thing of tech first, content first, and you speak to the stalwarts, they'll say yeah, at the end, at the end of it, in our world. It is a gem of an idea that matters. Yeah. Yes. Then whatever technology world, you use yes. and is available for you to amplify, to facilitate, yeah. to enable certain things for different platforms, different devices, different sets of consumers. I think that's what the role of tech is. So, yeah. so I think for me, fundamentally, that core and what we've learned all our life is that core matters the most, you know. And then yeah. tech comes and opens up a world. But now, now is such an amazing era where we are also trying to solve a consumer problem problem from yeah. marketer's lens, all the while we were just trying to solve the marketer's Brand problem. problem. Yeah. Yeah. But now we have also gone a notch ahead. Like what, what has Facebook done? They've solved the consumer problem, of right? Course. Of connecting people and it's 100%. super, super successful. So even now when we are looking at a marketer's problem, which has got consumer at heart, our solutions are getting more consumer Consumer's driven. We're trying to yeah. solve a consumer problem, yeah. which is then becoming a super hit. Thank you so much guys for all your time on a Saturday and I think we'll end this with something creative coming from Neeraj. Neeraj. Can we have the hula hoop? So, look at this. Nice. You need to put a chip in the hula hoop. By the yeah way. and now when I'm doing this, I I've, got, I've got a lot of gadgets in here. It's kind of reading how many calories am I burning and it gives me a lot of agility out here. And I can do pull-ups while I'm doing this. I can go up the stairs. I can I can be standing on a ball like a circus guy and do a lot of stuff out there. And obviously you can do salsa. Thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of the Pocket Aces Power Hour. We hope you liked it. Please tell us in the comments below, ask questions, uh, give us your thoughts. We'd uh, love to answer all of them in the comments. And let us know what are the topics you want to cover going forward. See you.